Hi everybody and welcome to a new series called On the Range. Now the On the Range series is going to be a tutorial series where I pick a topic, it can be an aircraft system, a tactic, technique, uh, just anything at all that I happen to happens to be on my mind or happen to be working on at the moment. And today's video is going to cover gun employment in the A-10A model. Now as you can see I am flying around in the A-10A and this is the lower fidelity although it's a, a really great simulation but it is lower fidelity than the A-10C model that a lot of you might be familiar with from the DCS world uh, group of modules. Now in this simulation there aren't as many switches to throw, there's not as much systems interaction as you would get in the C model, but the techniques that you use to employ the gun and the basics of gun employment are the same, although I will cover in a lot more detail the A-10C model in a later video. Now if you're familiar with the A-10, you probably already know that the primary weapon on the A-10 uh, aircraft is the 3mm Gal weight gun system. Now the gun system can fire high explosive incendiary, armor piercing incendiary, uh, target practice, and right now I have a combat mix, which is a basically just a 5 to 1 ratio of uh, high explosive incendiary, HEI, and armor piercing incendiary, uh, API ammunition. And that's basically what you'll you'll have on your default missions in uh, a DCS A-10A mission. Now cockpit indications that you're going to be worrying about. Not a whole lot to worry about in the A model, but I'll briefly walk through it. Here's your armament control panel down on the left side of the forward console. You can see the basic uh, basic things we have to deal with here, just starting from the left. Master arm, it's already set to arm by default. I have a rounds counter that shows me that I have 1150 rounds remaining. And I have a gun rate switch that is uh, currently set to high. But all of your interaction in the ATNA Flaming Cliffs is going to be through the keyboard. So let me show you quickly how to pull up the guns and get it set up for employment. Now first, if you look at my HUD, you can see that I'm in the navigation mode. There is no you know, gun symbology or anything uh, that I would normally use to employ weapons. So what I need to do is press key 7 on my keyboard, and that's going to put it into the air-to-ground master mode. And you can see that I have, by default, Mark 82 selected. And if I wanted to, I could actually employ the gun from here. I do have a gun cross on the default air-to-ground HUD that I could use if I wanted to, but what I'm going to do is then uh, call up the gun reticule itself, and I can do that by pressing C on my keyboard, and that brings up a dedicated uh, HUD sub-mode that is strictly for gun employment. You can see that I have my gun reticule displayed right there in the middle. Okay, now the gun sub-mode let me kind of get myself oriented here, remember where I am. Okay, I'm unlost. Now the gun sub-mode, like I said, brings up the gun reticule. The reticule is a CSIP, CCIP, or Computer Calculated Endpoint Impact Point system. So if I point it down to the ground, I can count on that if I squeeze the trigger now that the rounds are going to fall where that reticule is pointing on the ground. It also has a range indicator. Like right now, you see it has 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 1 1.0, should be going down to 0 0.9. That's slant range, uh, slant range to target in nautical miles. I also have a, like a range tape. I guess the, uh, what would that be called? Yeah, range tape is good enough, but it's basically just a, you can see that it uh, counts down. Like right now, that uh, highlighted darker green on the middle of the reticule. That's also a range indication. And we get some altitude here and I can show you exactly what that means because it is kind of important when you get into employment of a gun. Okay, so let me just bring it back around and get pointed down to the ground. Now like I said, the number at the bottom is slant range in nautical miles. The range tape is slant range in feet. So the 12 o'clock position is 12,000 feet. It ticks around. The 9 o'clock position it's at now is 9,000 feet. 6,000 feet. 5, 4, 3. And at that point you're done. You're ready to pull up. So two basic ways that you can determine slant range to target using that gun reticule. And you'll see why that's important here in a second once we get into the employment of the gun. So uh, in the A model, once you have that gun 
sub mode called up, there is no action required. All the switches are already set up. All you have to do is pull the trigger and you're ready to go. So why don't we go ahead and do that and get into what you uh, tuned in to see, a little bit of employment of the gun. And I have some targets out here in the distance. Uh, three tanks kind of in a triangle, uh, triangle formation out there in the distance. That's what we're going to employ on first. Now there are two basic techniques that you can kind of use to uh, very very basic techniques that you can use for gun employment. The first that I'll show is low angle strafe and that's uh, kind of what it sounds like. You're strafing the target at a low dive angle. You know basically anywhere from zero degrees down to 15 degrees and you can see exactly what that means by like right now on my HUD you can see that I'm at 15 degrees nose down. So that's kind of the bottom limit of a what you would determine as a determine to be a low angle strafe. 10 degrees, you know, 5 degrees and that's what uh, you're referring to when you say low angle strafe. So okay I've got the targets in sight. Let me go ahead and roll in on these guys and just demonstrate a, a basic run here. Okay so I had visual on the target and what I'm going to do is just bring the nose around Place the reticule kind of short of the target, and then once you get to about 6,000 feet, about right there, track the target, squeeze the trigger, about a two second burst, pull for the horizon, and pull off the target. Happened kind of quickly, and I'm going to concentrate here. These guys do fire back, even though it is kind of just a, a practice area. So I'm going to get chewed up here a little bit, I'm sure as we get into this, but that was a basic gun run. So, I mean, what I did was I just rolled in on the target, placed the gun reticule just short of the target, got to the range that I intended to fire, tracked the target, shoot, pulled off the target, and got out of the area. I mean, that's, the, that's a basic gun run right there. And right now I'm just kind of set up in a racetrack pattern, so I'm just going to bring it back around. And I'll show you that one more time, and then we'll move on to a high angle strafe. So, identify my target. Okay, I have it inside. I'm kind of keeping it padlocked as I come around. Okay, low angle strafe. So that's going to be just about a, about a five degree angle. And you don't have to track it as long as I'm tracking. I'm picking it up a long ways out. But I'm placing the reticule short of the target, getting to more or less the range I intend to employ at. It's about 6,000 feet or about one mile slant range, a little over one mile. Track, shoot, two second burst, pull, and off target left again. And I'm going to try to stay a little bit unpredictable to uh, confuse, the, uh, confuse the gunners there on those T-55s. Move it around, stay unpredictable. And as long as you're not predictable in the air, they'll have a hard time tracking you, unless it's some kind of like a guided, a uh, radar guided triple A. So I've picked up a little bit of altitude so that I can show you the second technique, and that's the high angle strafe. And as you can probably guess, the high angle strafe is very similar to low angle strafe, it's just from a higher dive angle. The angle that you want to shoot for is anywhere from 30 to 45 degrees. Now the benefit that you get is that from a higher dive angle you're coming down well obviously at a steeper angle and you're going to get more rounds into a more compact area. You're going to have less dispersion than you would get firing from a lower uh, dive angle. And that's going to mean more, mean more rounds on target and more rounds onto more lightly, area, more lightly armored areas on armor if that's what you're going for. Okay, so we're set up on the same this little group of three tri three tanks in the triangle right there. And I'm just going to run in from, let me see, I got about 12,000 feet. That's a good uh, good starting altitude for what I've got in mind. You can go lower, but uh, you get plenty of time to track the higher that you are. More time to track the higher that you are. Okay, good visual. That'll give me about a three degree dive angle. So rolling in, I'm going to cut my throttles, and just like before, I'm going to place my reticule short of the target, 
there you are. Okay, placing the reticule short of the target. Getting to the range I want to employ the gun from. It's about six, seven thousand feet. What about there? Walk it up, track, shoot, and pull up. Throttles. About a, looking for about a 4G pull to the horizon. And let's get out of here. See how that did. Okay, so that sent a lot of rounds going down to the top of that armor from a higher dive angle. Okay, so let me just try this one more time. One thing that you probably notice is that you get a lot of airspeed coming down, so... It's not recommended that you use speed brakes on the way down. That's going to affect uh, the uh, calculations for the computer calculated impact point. So speed brakes on the way down are not recommended, but... Controlling the throttle and chopping it to idle is definitely recommended. I think I was up to about 400 and... Jeez, I probably got close to 450 knots in that dive. Okay, so this should be a little bit more reasonable. I'm going to pop up to about 6,000 feet and employ one more high-angle strafe on this group of targets and then call it quits. Okay, 220 knots, uh, about 6,000 feet. And generally speaking, 6,000 feet is about the minimum altitude that I will employ this at. It just gives you very little time to track and pick the target up and get rounds where you want them to get to. Okay, 235 knots. Still got it coming around. I'd like to kind of bring the target down this little notch between the canopy rail and the uh, and my console just to help me out with keeping visual. Okay, so we'll call that good enough. Okay, rolling in. Chopping the throttles. and pick these guys up visually. Okay, place my reticule. Track. Burst. Pull up. And get off the target. And I really pressed that to a bit of a lower altitude and a lower slant range than... I normally would have. That was kind of an aggressive pull that I uh, had to do there to avoid sliding into the ground. But then again, I mean, there is something to be said for that. The closer you are to the target, the uh, the more effective the gun is. And so against highly armored targets, you know, there is something to be said for getting in close. But then again, there's also, you have to take ricochet into account. You know, if you get in too close, fire the gun, then all of a sudden you're flying into your ricochet rounds, and you could incur some aircraft damage due to that, so uh, about 3,000 feet is what I would recommend, at least, uh, as far as, you know, that's as far as you want to push it before you uh, start running into all these other considerations, if, whether, whether it be terrain, ricochet, or what have you. So, folks, I'm going to call it quits here for this episode of On the Range. If you did enjoy the video and if you found it useful, please do subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Or leave a comment in the comment section below. It really does help out a lot. So I'll see you next time. Have a good day.